Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking an in-depth look, a review of Creed's Arolfa. And this is one of my favourite from the House of Creed. It's such an unsung hero. It's so out of the limelight, but it's so good. So I wanted to take this video as an opportunity just to talk a little bit more in detail about this fragrance and really kind of open up other people's eyes to how good this fragrance really is. So without further ado, guys, we are going to get straight on with the review. Just before we do, if you guys are new to the channel, then please don't forget to drop a like on this video. It really helps out on the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and if you are a fan of fragrances, please don't forget to subscribe as well because we're growing a really great community. We'd be more than happy to have you. We talk about fragrances way too much uh, in the comments and it's just a really nice community to be part of. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please feel free to subscribe as well. Okay, so getting on with the review. I did something similar to this with uh, a fragrance that is compared to a role for a lot, uh, which is Millicene Imperial by Creed. And the two are in the same ballpark, but they kind of go off in different directions. The perfumer behind this masterpiece Creed fragrance, Pierre Bourdon, whenever he was first creating this, he made uh, the kind of structure, whenever like, you know, perfumers do that, they made the sort of like base of Arolfa and Millicene Imperial. And then he sort of decided to do the fragrance, I think, in this sort of way. And then he couldn't decide. So I think he decided to do Millicene Imperial in another direction. But when you strip it all back, they are very similar fragrances. They do get compared a lot. Millicene Imperial is the kind of uh, spotlight fragrance that people talk about whenever they talk about creeds. Uh, marine, aquatic, fresh, citrusy smells. But Arolfa is also in that kind of ballpark of fresh marine smells, but this one's a lot more citrusy fresh. It's not as kind of um, smooth and almost powdery, creamy that Millicene Imperial is. This is a little bit more harsh in terms of the citrus, but in a very nice way. So Arolfa was released in 1992. So it's been around for quite a while. And when you first smell it, which I will do now, I do definitely pick up on the fact that it has got an almost older kind of DNA. It's not modern. It's not like one of the fresh moderns that you get from stuff like uh, Bulgari Tiger, Creed, Aventus Cologne, and you know stuff like Louis Vuitton Imagination, like the fresh, clean, like almost laundry detergent smells that you get from the newer fragrances. It's not very modern but it is timeless, it is classic. But I could definitely pick up on the fact that this was like a 90s, 2000s sort of fragrance. It has got an older kind of style of freshness to it. Um, you've probably smelled this in like stuff like aftershaves, like, you know, dab on ones. You could probably smell it in like a actual um, shaving lotion. Uh, I get the smell of that in this. So you have probably smelled the DNA of this from like, you know, uh, from like shower gels and stuff like that. The DNA has definitely been replicated in that kind of way. You've definitely smelled something similar to this, but without knowing it. And I feel like this could be a great signature scent. On Fragrantica, there is a link in the description, by the way, to my profile. I have actually listed this as my signature scent because something about it I just really resonate to. I just love the fact that it's not, uh, it's not like one of the Creed fragrances that everyone goes to straight away in the department store. It's kind of hidden towards the back. Uh, and it's kind of a more kind of, if you know, you know, sort of fragrance. And I just really like that about it. No one really talks about it, which is again, another reason why I really like it. There are a few fragrance YouTubers that actually put this at their number one in their Creed list, which is actually really great to see. Stuff like um, Antonio from Real Men, Real Style. He really likes this fragrance. He lists this as his number one. And it's just good to see that people do realize how good this fragrance actually is. And Funnily enough, this has been rumoured to be David Beckham's signature scent, Arolfa. And I can definitely see that. If I just smell it real quick. Yeah, I could definitely see someone like David Beckham wearing it, like a sports personality, a sports star, because it has got that freshness to it, that cleanness, um, that would just work really well for someone like David Beckham, for example. It's just really nice. And I've got a funny story about this one, actually. Whenever I first ever smelled it in the department store. I think back whenever Creed had the old 120 milliliter bottles. When I first smelled this, I picked it up, I smelled it out of the cap, 
like that. And I was like, oh my God, I don't like that. <laughs> and this was in my first kind of like ever year of like really learning more about perfumes, aftershaves, fragrances. And I smelled it for the first time as a complete novice. My nose was untrained and I just put the cap back on and just put it back down because I thought whenever I first smelled a Rolfa that it smelled like urine, it smelled like wee, it had an off sort of smell to it. And for the, like the next few years, the next couple of years, I never really ever went to reach for it. I never thought much of this fragrance because I thought it just smelled off. I just thought it smelled like like gone off wee and like urine and stuff. But that couldn't be more further from the truth, the further down uh, you actually get to try this fragrance. And funny enough, the same thing happened with my brother. I got him to go to the John Lewis store as well, give this one a try. He told me the exact same thing. He really didn't like this when he first smelled it. But um, I have got a bottle at home, which I've got now. And I told him, look, just keep smelling it. Just keep, keep training your nose. Keep, I was like, gonna try it, try it, try it. And eventually after a few wearings, he was like, okay, I'm starting to understand now. And each time, every like new time he goes to smell it, he likes it more and more. And it was the exact same thing for me. Uh, whenever I first ever smelled it, like I said, really didn't like it. And then I just kept trying it. My brain and my nose just kept developing and just something just clicked. And I was like, okay, man, this thing's good. So if you go and smell this in the department store, if you get a sample of it and you don't like it, you think it smells like urine and stuff like that, just keep trying it. And then eventually in your brain, it should click. Because the thing with Creed is, even though they're quite expensive for what they are, and they're, they're not that strong, all of them are super likable. I don't think there's any that you could really dislike. There's none that you would smell and be like, oh, I hate that. This one, whenever I first started out, was like the only one that I thought could be that fragrance that like you might absolutely hate it. But just keep trying it. Trust me, you should eventually end up liking it. And final fun fact about Arolfa before we talk about the notes and stuff like that is the actual name. So Arolfa, um, the name from Arolfa comes from the actual Creed family. So ER stands for Erwin Creed, who is the son of Olivia Creed, the perfumer, the, the nose behind this fragrance, as well as Pierre Wardon. Uh, you've also got OL, which is Olivia Creed's daughter. And then FA stands for Fabian, which is the mother of Erwin and Olivia Creed. And it's been said that they would go out on their yacht and stuff like that in the Mediterranean and they wanted a fragrance to commission kind of like their memory of that. And they actually use this fragrance as a kind of like statement for the Creed house. And this is like their sort of fragrance, if that makes any sense. And I can definitely see that being on the Mediterranean, on a yacht, on a boat, uh, and just the waves and like eating fresh fruit on the yacht or something like that. That's exactly what you get from this fragrance. So we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, the, the backstory about this fragrance and stuff. Now we're going to be taking a little look at the actual notes for this fragrance. So on Fragrantica, the top notes of this fragrance, there's quite a lot. So the top notes are lime, bergamot, melon, green notes, lemon, violet, and caraway. I'll be honest, I do get quite a lot of those top notes throughout the fragrance. Like for me, whenever I first smell this from the cap, I can definitely smell like a bergamot or lime in there. There's that, that definitely kind of green citrus. Melon, I can get a little bit of the sweetness in there. I think um, it's the same melon that they use for Millicium Imperial. But this fragrance, when you first spray it, for the first kind of 15 to 30 minutes, it's just like a fresh burst of those green citruses that you get. And then it develops into the middle notes, which are listed as herbal notes, pine tree, ginger, which is quite an interesting one. I love the note of ginger in fragrances, jasmine, pepper, cyclamen, and nutmeg flower. So. The middle notes in this give it an almost spiciness. It's a very muted spiciness. Like there's not a lot of pepper in here. Like there's just a tiny little bit, as well as the pine tree in there. Uh, it just gives it a really smooth greenness to it. Like it's very subtle. I can't really smell too much of the ginger in here. Again, it probably gives a little bit of spiciness to it, a little bit of lift, which probably helps with the freshness. And then the base notes of this are the kind of signature Creed DNA. You've got ambergris, musk, sandalwood, obviously the creed sandalwood, oak moss and cedar. So that base just gives it that creed DNA that we are often associated with 
with the creaminess, especially whenever you come towards the, uh, the dry down of this. You've still got the freshness, but then it just fades perfectly into this creamy, salty, marine sort of smell. And that's definitely from the ambergris that they're using here. Creamy, salty ambergris, as well as the lime, and it just really pieces this fragrance together. That signature ambergris that Creed use are just so present in this fragrance. And they do such a good job of blending all the notes in here perfectly together. In terms of projection and longevity on this one and performance, it's not the best. None of the Creed fragrances are known for being the best performers, which is unfortunate, but with this one, I really like to overspray it, spray it on my clothes, because when you spray it on clothes, it seems to last for a very long time, and you just get the, the lime and the citrus is in there, just kind of stay around for such a long time. And it keeps your clothes smelling almost laundry detergent fresh, which is quite nice. But on skin, if I'm being honest, uh, I'm normally gonna be wearing this in a hot hot summer's day or a nice spring, spring day or something like that in the kind of hotter weather. I usually get between three to six hours of longevity on this one, which isn't a lot, uh, but for a freshie, it's kind of around standard. It's kind of around, um, it's kind of around average that you get for, uh, a freshy. The projection on this one again isn't the best. I don't really get too much of like a, a scent trail that follows me with this one which is annoying. Like it doesn't really project that you would think it would. In the first hour, like whenever you move your head around and stuff like that, you can definitely smell yourself. I get good projection, like let's say to like a, about a shoulder's length for the first hour and then the second and third hour it kind of slowly comes closer to being a skin scent. But if you really spray with this one, I honestly, um, the reason why I've got like such lit of this for like my 70, 80 fragrance bottle collection, the reason why I've gone through so much of this is because I'm not afraid to overspray with Creed fragrances. And you can really get away with spraying 10 sprays, making yourself be, uh, be smelled, like whenever you spray more, it's gonna project a little bit wider. And that's kind of the secret really with Creed fragrances, especially with, are all for a Millicene Imperial. Because they're freshies, because they're so inoffensive, you really can just layer the sprays on. And every time I do it, I just try not to think about how much I'm a, how much money of sprays I'm spraying on myself. But it is worth it, I feel like, because you get to smell just great uh, of, of a Rolfer. If you feel like you're not smelling it anymore, just respray it and you've got another extra kind of hour to two hour burst of this fragrance. I know it sucks, uh, especially with the price of this thing, but uh, it's just, it's just what's well, got to be done, really with this fragrance. In terms of the gender of this fragrance, I can definitely see it being more manly. Uh, I wouldn't say it's unisex. I can definitely see this as a more sort of traditional manly smell. I don't really feel like I could see a woman pulling this off. There is that, with the spiciness in here, it does give it a manly touch. I feel like if they put more of a focus on the citrus and like sandalwood note in here, this could be more of a unisex fragrance. But yeah, this is definitely a, a more manly smell. In terms of a price for what you get, this is more on the expensive side. Uh, on the fragrance groups, you can sometimes get away with a bottle of this for, in the UK, for about 120 to 130 pounds for a full 100 ml. At the Creed Boutique, I think this comes in at around 270 pounds retail. Um, you can get it cheaper online. Uh, I will leave links in the description. But for that price, um, would I buy it? Um, I managed to get a really good price on this in a Facebook group, which is the reason why I bought it. But I mean, if you love the fragrance, try it, see what you think about it. If you only want one fragrance and you want a signature fragrance, uh, yeah, I would say, I would say it's worth it actually. But if you have got a lot of fragrances, I probably wouldn't go out and spend the money on a full 100 ml bottle of this. In terms of who I can see wearing this, um, like I said, I can just see someone like sort of like that David Beckham-ish character, someone who's got you know a little bit of money, they, are, they can explore the world a little bit more, they've got the ability to go to these nice places, they're wearing sort of semi-casual clothes, smart casual, they've just got like a nice polo shirt, um, and it's just a kind of smart casual fragrance. I feel like where I can see wearing this would mainly be towards the spring and summertime, on vacation or just to like a a nice like evening or something like that, but this thing is like Mr. Versatile, this could be worn as a signature scent for any occasion, I feel like, because it has got that traditionalness to it, um, that kind of 90s uh, aftershave almost smell, that sort of shaving balm smell that this thing kind of has. Uh, it's just really, really classy, really presentable. I mean, there are better options for the winter time, uh, but still, if you're wearing this to work as well, this is great. 
Um, if you're wearing this on a date, don't feel like anyone else will be smelling like you if you did decide to pick this up. It is very unique. On Fragrantica, the closest thing that this reminds people of actually is Millicium Imperial or potentially uh, Fan de Fendi by uh, Fendi. Um, but I don't see the comparison really with that one. I've smelled that and it's in a similar ballpark, but nothing even comes close to this fragrance. It's weird that not too many people have tried to clone it either. Think about this was actually my first ever Creed fragrance and I bought this one because I knew, look, there's not too much clones around of this. If I want to buy it, I'm going to have to get the real deal. And I'm glad I did because it's just such a nice fragrance. Whenever I smell it, it's just like, oh my God, that is good. Um, and not too many fragrances actually make me do that. <laughs> uh, but this one, there's just something that it just does something to your brain where it just like, yeah, that's good. That's a good fragrance. So a few comments on Fragrantica for what people and the community think of this fragrance. Uh, one person says uh, it has the potential to be the greatest of all time aquatic scent, uh, but just falls out of contention because of the performance, uh, basically, um, which I guess is true. If this had better performance, then yeah, I can definitely see this being more uh, of the, the more talked about Creed fragrance, definitely. Uh, another person says that this smells like fresh linen and it's genuinely one of their favorite fragrances of all time. Inoffensive clean smell that you could wear to church or to work, uh, which I think is definitely true. Um, it, it definitely does give that kind of, uh, you're on a boat and you just smell the fresh sea breeze coming out of you and you've just got like a bunch of like fresh fruits next to you on like a table. That is exactly what this smells like. Uh, another person says this is a soft and powdery fragrance and the scent provides a pleasant nostalgia feel uh, from the time period of whenever it was released. But there is a fecal note in this fragrance that ruins it for me, which could be a little bit like what I was saying uh, where it gives that kind of urine smell, um, which could be from the citrus in here, just kind of not mixing well, um, or just like there's like a part in, in people's brain that just kind of gives it an off smell, which I definitely got whenever I first smelled it, which is why this is a really weird fragrance. Like if you like it, then you love it. But if you don't like it, then you're really going to try and put it aside and, and not try it again, which is why it's a weird one. Whenever other people smell this on you, they don't get that. But whenever you smell it really close, you do sometimes get that smell. Um, but in the air, it's just fresh sea breeze. Um, it's just the closer you get, potentially that's where you'll get in that, uh, that urine smell that I sometimes used to get. I don't get it anymore, which is strange. In terms of versatility, this thing is super versatile. Like I said, the only time I wouldn't really reach for it is the winter time, but you could still get away with it. You could wear this to anything really. Compliment factor, like I said, I do get nice reactions with this. I've never had like an over the top reaction. I've just had people like, oh, bro, you smell quite nice. What are you wearing? That smells, that smells nice. Um, mostly because it's unique. Like there's not too much things around there that smell like this. Because it is a Creed, like the, the quality of it is top level. So most people are pleasantly surprised when you walk around with this. Funny enough, whenever I do get compliments with this, it's usually whenever I'm talking to people like probably from as far away I am from the camera. So sometimes like an arm's length uh, is kind of the, the most times that I get compliments or reactions with this one. It's never been from like a stranger. It's always been from people I know, people I'm talking to kind of close and like I'm turning my head and stuff like that. And it gets them with like the breeze and stuff. It's never been from a scent trail. So who is this fragrance for? Um, I can definitely see a young professional person wearing this. Anyone from the age of 20 to 30, I feel like this would be perfect for, but you know, fragrances are fragrances and you know, there's, there's no age limit on them really. You can wear them if you're younger, you can wear them if you're older, but for me, I see this for someone 20 to 30. So that is gonna do it for this review guys. I absolutely love this fragrance. Remember, if you did wanna pick up a bottle, I will leave a link down in the description below. Again, the box on this thing is really cool. I love the blue on it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. If you guys want to learn how to decant fragrances and actually grow a fragrance really quickly, if you want to learn more about fragrance decanting, I will leave a link in the description. It teaches you everything there is to know about growing a collection uh, without spending too much money. If you're interested, it's only £10 and it teaches you absolutely everything. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.